For 120 years, the lifeboatmen of Flamborough have risked their lives to save others off one of Britain's most dangerous coasts. I've actually seen men fighting, and I mean fighting, to, to get on the lifeboat. They're, they're waiting for the coxswain to come down with the keys, and they've been killed outside of the lifeboat house, and they've been actually hitting one another. I mean fighting properly, not just play, to get on the line. The Flamborough Light has guided mariners for more than five centuries, a beacon from a community that has seafaring in its blood. For generations, the people of Flamborough Head relied on fishing for their livelihood. Today, the salt of the North Sea still hangs heavily in the air, everywhere reminders of the villagers' maritime heritage. But the sea has taken a terrible toll. is the busiest place anywhere there is on the coast. There's only about Pentland Firth, but there's more current goes than what there is here. There'll be a period when there's no breakers coming ashore, and then all of a sudden you get five when they come all in at once, and the break to the bottom of the reef. And anybody that's near that reef is in a very dangerous situation. There's only the Flamborough fishermen that know these reefs, being brought up with them from being children. Robert Emerson has been a lifeboatman for 50 years. Good morning, Good morning. ladies. Good it's a morning. cold morning, but it's nice and fresh. It's very nice. What have, would you like? Thank you. Um, Up till a few years ago, uh, uh, Flamborough was a very big fishing community. and. Indirectly, nearly all the people in the village was connected with fishing. And if you're connected with fishing, you are automatically connected with lifeboat. No one, I don't go myself, and I look at them going out now. In bad weather, wet throw. It, it's something that you can't put your finger on. And I wonder to myself now when I aren't going, like, why have I done it? Why are people so keen to do it now? But Flamborough's life-saving tradition is threatened. The RNLI's district inspector has recommended that the village's Oakley-class offshore lifeboat is withdrawn, its job taken over by two neighbouring stations and an inshore rescue boat. Both Filey and Bridlington, they're very good, they're very good crews, they're highly trained, but they can't be in two places at once. Impossible, isn't it? So this area is going to be left uncovered, and it's purely to do with politics, I think so. It's going to mean lives are going to be at risk. That's 
the simple answer. So there's 10 people drowning, and then the institution come along and say, well, uh, we think we ought to have a lifeboat there. We know we want a lifeboat here. Without a loss of life to prove it, surely it's been proved over the years of this treacherous coast tides. Local councillor Norman Hall is the chairman of the village's RNLI branch. Twelve years ago, he helped raise a quarter of a million pounds to buy the boat. Good morning, Mary. Nice morning. What sort of response are you getting for the uh, coffee the afternoon? Not too bad, Stand. Norman. You know, it is... You know, There's been a sense of apprehension about the future of the lifeboat. We've heard nothing from the RNI at all, other than they are coming out to meet us on Friday morning and to give us the decision that will be made on Thursday afternoon. Uh, so we are just just waiting and hoping that they're, they're going to bring us a favourable response. The executive committee of the Royal National Lifeboat Institution has made the decision that the Oakley lifeboat at Flamborough Head will be withdrawn and it will be replaced by an Atlantic 21 operating from South Landing. So obviously with any boat of that type there are limitations and you just don't send it out in very severe conditions. I feel absolutely choked to be quite honest. I think it's uh, the wrong decision that has been made and I think only time will tell. Very, very. I think definitely lives will be lost, whether it be tomorrow, next week, next month or next year. Something will happen where the point has been proved and people will die, it's as simple as that. The Atlantic 21 lifeboat the RNLI want the Flamborough crew to man is four times faster than the offshore lifeboat, more manoeuvrable and, say officials, more suited to the coastline. For Cox and Les Robson it's the end of an era. It's a rotten day, isn't it? I mean, the lifetime's work gone down the, the Swanee life. All right, Wes. All right, John. You look all day. It is, isn't it? Because I work for our and ally, I've got to put, like, a full half day every day down at the boat house on the boat. Brasses would was split up right way through the week where every day you had some brasses to do and I ain't going to miss that at all. <laughs> News at 1.30, I'm Michelle Hawkins. The crew of a doomed lifeboat who helped save 200 sea anglers caught up in a storm off the east coast have voted to go on strike. The Flamborough lifeboat, which is to be replaced by an inshore vessel next summer, was called out to escort 20 boats into Bridlington Harbour. Crewmen say the new Atlantic 21 boat would have been swamped by the storm and they'll refuse to man it. It's been described as the first mutiny in RNLI history. After that bad day that we had at sea, I think uh, the crew realised that we were coming round to winter time again and it wouldn't be fine every day that we went and that day everybody at sea was saying an Atlantic class would, boat wouldn't cope with these conditions. And everybody has, has decided you have to stand up and chance losing everything to try and get what you really need. There's no question of the crew 
not wanting to go. If they had a boat to go in, they would go. And this is the trouble with this inshore thing. If, if I said to the crew, look, it's up to you, there's a boat in difficulty, they would go. And then they would go and drown themselves. February 1993, and former soldier Peter Ellis is one of several villagers recruited by the RNLI to man the new boat in defiance of the existing crew. Take care. Have a good week, yeah. won't you? Well, as long as you can. Don't forget your grandma. All right. As soon as I heard about uh, the present crew were boycotting and everything, you know, and that was it, my mind was made up. And I've operated boats similar to these in the past anyway. And well, you know, I, I think it's a good boat. People who are saying things about it have not got the experience. They've never used one of these boats. I mean, they're entitled to an opinion. Um, but it doesn't really bother me. And like I said, my mind's been made up for a long time now. Led by Cox and Robson, the first group of volunteers leaves for the RNLI's training school on the Isle of Wight to learn how to become inshore lifeboatmen. People are pretty upset that a few others out of the village that have not been connected with the lifeboat before have stepped forward and said, we'll take your lifeboat when we were trying to fight the case to keep the offshore boat. You can't buy pounds worth of experience, can you? The land man, like, and you, you can't look a fishing. I mean, we couldn't go and be a joiner, an electrician, could we? It's just the same, like. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome to Cow's Base. What we aim to do is to familiarise you with the basic principles of navigating in an Atlantic 21 in a strange area, which the Solent is for you, and give you a night search exercise. That's the programme, or our aims for the week. Cox and Robson must turn a group of inexperienced volunteers into a crew to man the new boat. Today, they'll learn how to ride their Atlantic 21 if it capsizes. It worked pretty nice, but trouble was I got my foot caught. I was under water, you see, gasping up for breath, and it was just water there. You saw them all gathering around me to help me. You know, I mean, that's teamwork, isn't it? I can't ever remember anything to equal the Flanders situation. I hope in time that um, the Atlantic 21 will prove itself and, and that the, the local people who are sitting in opposition in Flandre will allow the, the boat and the young men who volunteer to crew it get on with the job and give them a fair crack of the work. If the men um, had transferred over, I would have been far easier in my mind because we would have had those with a great deal of local knowledge, as it is now. Some of them we've got to train up in first principles. When you're down around the other end, and that you, you let it keep light out, showing it all the time, to come, to come round, round the other end. And then, if you're going up sure, and that you let it keep clear a stop being scar. I admire him for sticking up to the rest of the people. 
taken a lot of courage in it, and they've taken a lot of stick. Not only from the crew, from very near everybody in Flamborough. And I think we'll be all right. I don't think they have anything to worry about at all, really. Early summer and the end of a tradition at Flamborough. The annual blessing of the old boat, the last before she's retired. in the palm of your hand. Be present with all who go down to the sea and have their business in great waters. And bless this lifeboat and her crew and all who sail in and serve her and bring them safely home to the haven where they would be with a grateful sense of all your mercies. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's uh, quite a large turnout today, and a lot of them are uh, local people that don't always come down to see the lifeboat go, but everybody's turned out the village to see the end of it. End of an era, really. Yeah. 100 and odd years of lifeboat in at North Landing. We'll have to see what the future holds. The lifeboat is very much part of the heart of this village, um, and I think some of the feelings that have been experienced in the last 12 months echo this. The, uh, People take the lifeboat for granted, like many things in life, until they take it away, or until they change it. I think it'll be, as I was praying for it last night, to be a year or so before I think the healing takes place. And I think in some people, sadly, will never be healed. Flamborough basks in summer sunshine, the holiday makers arrive. But tensions between two lifeboat crews have split the village. Some neighbours no longer speak. I'm an entertainer and I write songs for tunes, for relaxation tapes, soundtracks for videos, various things like that. I've always been interested in lifeboats. My granddad was musical director in a theatre in Blackpool that was on the promenade. So all my life I grew up on the promenade. And in those days, the Blackpool lifeboat was a Liverpool-class lifeboat. And I was always around when they launched it. It was hard work to get it across the beach and they needed all the help they could get. Eric Lee has agreed to man the new boat after three years helping to launch the old one. When we came here, I wanted to obviously be part of, of what went on in Flamborough. We have a good crew. Hopefully we'll have a good new crew, but we have a good old crew. Um, they were very good at what they did. And um, it's a shame that some of them aren't moving over, but that's their choice to make. You know. There is a bank about 20 yards out. So you can't... You've got to be careful. Yeah, just go and fetch me a bigger soap, will you? This is what the RNLI are going to give us. And if Flamborough wants to keep the traditional life saving going on, this is what we've got to accept. It's a lot better boat than a lot of, what a lot of people think. It's been very difficult to keep the morale, because you had to keep two crews happy. At the back of my mind, when the bleepers go for the offshore boats, it's a worry whether they're going to turn up or not.
August the 16th and Flamborough's last offshore lifeboat is prepared for its final voyage. It's a very, very sad time for everybody down here. And when you think of all the old fishermen and the coxswains that I've known down here, you know, it, I'll tell you what it's like making them turn in the grave. It is, honestly. We fought hard, you know, that nobody anymore. There's, you know, there's no we can do, no, we just accept it and uh, live on with the, the new setup. Do you think there are a few ghosts looking on today? I think there's a lot. Well, sorry. asking the crew and the helpers for the reliefers back. That's been the hardest thing. Deputy coxswain Robbie Major has volunteered to take the boat on what will be his last voyage too. and Major's career ends, a new one is beginning for his daughter, Becky. My dad did it and a lot of other family did it, my uncles and my brothers. So I decided to go on this one because it was for women as well. My dad was a bit you know, dubious about it but he's behind me 100% and I know the boat will do the job and he's just behind it now. I mean that boat's gone, there's no we can do to get it back. I've gotten uh, a letter of redundancy uh, which will be terminated at the 31st of December. I didn't really want to finish until I was 55. I have to do what they are in the last day. It's very, very depressing to come down here now on a bad weather morning and know there isn't a lifeboat in there and there's very little you can do about it. Mm -hmm. 